All right, what is going on? So, today is the last day of the block. Actually, officially the last day of the block. So we have a 3x3 tempo squat, a 5'1 tempo bench single at 7 or 8. I think it's 7. And then a 3x9 Larson with a weight I already have, as well as a squat I already have the weight for. Um, and that's just rear delts and abs. So pump probably won't be crazy today, but I'll still pose, hopefully have some type of a chest pump at least. Yeah, I'm kind of upset because yesterday I tried to film my pause deadlifts, which actually went really, really, really well. My form looked the best it ever has. Um, deads moved really well. I think I hit, I think I hit one, <sighs> shit. I think I hit 140 kilos for five at seven or eight. I don't remember what the weight was, but I think I know I had five paws at uh, eight. I don't know if I actually hit it. I think I hit it around seven. I think it was like 140. But either way, my form looked really good. Like my hips are much higher. Um, it was much more of like not, there's like almost no segmentation in my movement anymore, which is what I used to like struggle with a lot. Like I'd segment like as I was like, I guess it's like, this is my knees, right? Like my knees are here, right? My shins are like, you know, here in front of me a little bit. When I would bend, I'd bend up to my torso. My torso would be here. And then it'd be like, like, sorry, my hips would be like this. And my torso would be like this. So my arms would be the here. Instead of being like, if the bar is here, my, my shoulders and arms would line up here and I have to fall back into it and go into like a squat. So now the way I'm doing it is I'm hinging. So that instead of me hinging like this, I'm hinging like this. So my torso, instead of like this, is now kind of like this. And my arms are kind of lining up right with the bar. And the movement is just here to here instead of here back to here. Does that make sense? So it's a much straighter bar path, um, which makes you be able to move more weight with better form. And obviously keeps you less tired, keeps you better. And just, you know, that's how you should deadlift. So. Before it was like I would get into position. You would see like I'd get into position, pull slack, whatever, get to a point. I'd lift up and then it would no longer be any legs and it would just be lower back and me leaning forward. Um, and then like me hinging, like trying to hinge forward almost. Now it's like, you know, you push into the ground, your legs pull up, you pass your knees and you hip thrust it in. So now it looked a lot, lot better. It moved really well yesterday. So I was, I was fat. I literally was filming, right? Like had my tripod set up. Everything was set up. And I couldn't find the attachment that goes into my phone for the microphone because it was stuck in between here on my seatbelt. And I couldn't find it until I got to gym. I was like, okay, well, there's no car talk now, so I guess I'm just not going to film. So I didn't film yesterday. Um, but obviously today I'm filming. So uh, more big news for me. Uh, today is November 1st. So I finally have a USAPL membership. Uh, bought my membership, signed up for my meet. I'm competing in open and junior, uh, 82 and a half kilograms in January, at the end of January. Um, right now, I, I know one of the kids that's competing in junior, and he's going to shit on me. Like, he's way, way, way stronger than me. But the two other kids that are in open, I think I'm actually stronger than. So, as funny as this might sound to most of you, I might end up winning open and getting second place in junior which is kind of interesting because usually, obviously, that would be very weird. But you have to pay to register twice. Like, if you want to pick, compete in junior and open and have your, like, your score register in both, I guess, you have to pay for both entries. Um, it was only, like, you don't have to pay for a whole meet again. Like, the meet's expensive, and then it's, like, a little bit more for an entry. But, like, I, I asked my coach, and he was like, listen, if you can, like, you might as well do for both because you can place in one and not the other, like I'm probably going to. Or, you know, your totals just count in both, which is obviously better. So considering I only do a meet, most people do a meet one to three times a year maximum, it's not a big deal for me to send the extra extra few bucks to compete in both categories. So I'm going to compete in both categories. Hopefully I can win both, but... I don't think there's any way unless unless the kid that's competing against me in, in open uh, in junior um like bombs out fully or I'm just like a freak of nature and put 300 pounds on all of my lifts, which obviously is not going to happen. Um, 
for me to win against him, like he's deadlifting right now. He pulled 502 for a single at seven and he squatted 508 for a single at nine and a half, like last week. So he's the same amount of time to prepare for as me, obviously. Um, so the only way I'm beating him is if I literally can get my, like he's probably gonna squat over 600 pounds and deadlift over 600 pounds during the actual meet, which is insane. Um, unless he's like really close to where he's maxed out, which I don't know, to be honest, but if I can get my squat anywhere close to 400, I'll be ecstatic. And if I can get my deadlift anywhere close to four, like 55, I'll be super happy. So the, I have almost no shot of meeting him um, which I, I'm fine with, obviously. My bench might beat his, so I might get you know, like a bench gold, which I'll, I'll take, but we'll see. Either way, I'm excited though, because like now it's official. Like now I'm competing. Like I'm not, like, you can't really pull out anymore. Like I don't even know if I can get a refund if I wanted it. So like it's time. Like I'm, I'm, I'm locked into competing, which is sick. Um, new block, I'm really excited for. Obviously, I have tomorrow off, and then Friday, I start my new block. I don't know exactly what it's going to be yet. I talked to my coach a little bit. And I was, he was like, their accessory is probably going to stay like pretty much the same, um, volumes and like, like sets and reps might change a little bit. Uh, weights might change a little, obviously they're going to change if my sets and shit change. RP is obviously going to reset back to like the cycle. It's like a semi deload next week. And then like, you know, back to building up again. Um, but the main thing that I want to know, which I won't know obviously until Friday is. If my bench, if I'm getting singles for bench now, which I really want to because I feel like I might just I just do better with singles. Um, I'm gonna be hitting PRs like crazy. The problem is, how am I gonna do that for next block? Unless I just reset it again and hopefully I hit like my RP six this block, like my RP six next block. If let's just say I have singles for bench, or the way I'm trying to think about it is like if I have an RP six, let's just say like, I'm just gonna put a random weight, it's easy to calculate. If I have like RP six at 200 pounds for a single in my next block hopefully the block after that if i also have singles my rp6 it can has to be more than 200 like it'd have to be like I'd, my rps have to probably like move up a level for me to actually make progress that's the only reason i don't know if i'm going to get singles yet but we'll see because right now i have doubles anyway so realistically if he gives me doubles next block it's gonna have to be the same thing my rps just gonna have to be easier for each week which they, they will be because i'm already stronger than i was but I'm interested to see how that goes block wise and if any of my exercises change um like compound wise like if he changes ssb high bar because like i feel like ssb high bar is really off season work like you probably want to get closer to normal high bar and then obviously only low bar and then like pause and tempo and like take out all the other things that aren't low bar when you get closer but right now like i'll be like 10 weeks out so I wonder if he's going to switch us a normal high bar squat or like he'll take it fully out or he'll just leave it. I don't know. Um, we'll see because SSB is probably the most like outlandish thing that I do powerlifting wise, in my opinion. Like it's the most it's the most far off anything like bench. I'm doing pauses, which are normal, like long pauses. Tempo is normal. Close grip is pretty close. Larson's pretty close. And then like obviously comp. So like bench is all pretty normal. The only one maybe he changes eventually is Larson, I assume, because I feel like Larson closer to comp might be a little less useful just because you can't use light drive, obviously, and you want to learn how to use light drive. For me, at least, I need to learn how to use light drive better. So maybe he'll change that. Um, deadlift wise, I don't think anything's going to change because right now I just have pause at normal. I doubt he's going to change that. That's like the only two you really need is a power lift they're like maybe deficit deadlifts if you're like really weak on the bottom like out of the uh like off the floor but not for me right now um i think after my meet we might try some sumo too i don't know how that's gonna go i don't really look, fuck with sumo that much but like if he wants me to do it i'll do it obviously i think my leverages are built for conventional and i've just been pulling conventional for a long time i pulled sumo before you guys have seen me on the channel pull sumo i believe um and like i just think it was inconsistent and not great so maybe if i make the form better be fine but we'll see right now it's conventional until my meet for sure squatting and everything with squat shoes and all that staying the same after my meet i'm sure we're going to experiment with a bunch of stuff even though i honestly don't have that much turnaround if i want to do another meet when i think i do which would be like april or may so like i only have like three four months which is like i guess kind of normal for powerlifter it's like 12 to 16 weeks 
but also trying to start pulling sumo and trying to squat without squat shoes and all this shit or like changing my bench grip like my bench grip with again or like whatever we want to experiment with when I only have 12 weeks to master and peak like again and like try to improve my numbers from my last meet again which is going to be hard might be a little challenging so I don't actually know how much of that we're going to end up getting into but we'll see how this meet goes it's far away still and we'll see how I feel um I don't know. I'm excited to do this. Uh, I have the stoic knee sleeves now, which I didn't even talk about yet. So uh, my insers that I obviously you guys have seen me wear for a while now, like about two, three weeks now, um, they destroy like my left leg. I don't know why, like my left under my knee, like scrapes and it starts bleeding every time I wear them, which I'm fine with while I wear them. Like that's their job is to be tight and give me like tension. So I don't really care. The problem is my skin is like really raw, I guess. So like it was hurting my tendon. Um, which isn't optimal. So uh, my coach was like, if you want, you should probably not wear them for secondary days and get other knee sleeves. And uh, he recommended Stoics, and I agree. So I bought Stoics. Been wearing them. I wore them for one session, and my second time wearing them. First time for my real squats. I wore them for SSB. So we'll see how they feel. But last time I wore them, I felt pretty good. They're, like, a lot looser, and they're, like, kind of soft, but they still give you support. So they're better than my – they're 100% better than my Gym Reaper ones, but they're still, like – nowhere near insers um which is good my flexibles came which i go you guys saw my last video so yeah i'm gonna start drinking my pre i'm about five minutes away talked for a while today and uh yeah i'll head in i'll see you guys there all right um i only have three warms today because it's tempo so might as well film all of them and see if they move at the same speed My elbow needs to warm up, bro. Ow. All right. Make this a single. Actually, move the tempo I need to. Hopefully. We hope. We hope. by three make it move like the last one did all good look pretty keep it like that hopefully Easy. Two more. All right. I was instructed to put my feet a little closer. So we'll see how that works. I don't know. I've never really done close for long, but fuck it. We've all.
actually felt pretty good. Let's see how it looked. All right, the closer stance felt a little better, so do the last set with that one again. See if it moves just as well from the side. It's like a little bit more stable that way, so we'll see how it looks, but feels good. All right, so might officially change the squat form. I'll talk about it more in the car, I'm sure. But now we got a uh, tempo at eight, uh, a five one tempo, hopefully hitting a hundred kg, which is two and a half kilos off comp PR. Uh, this is first warm up, I'm gonna do two and then go to singles. I lied. We have two more ups. This, no more up, and then we go. Too big of a jump otherwise. Oh, two and a half kilos off the comp PR. All right, we got three by nine with Larson. That was by far the best 100 kilos that's ever moved in my life. So, really can't complain. This can be a rough three by nine, though.
14. Alright, taking this shit off to the cover, but let's see. Decent. I waited at 179 this morning, so super, super heavy. But, uh, all right, let's get in the car. All right, that was a very solid workout. Um, we're gonna talk about it in a sec once I can pull out of this garage. The like tightest garage I've ever seen in my life. What is this person doing? What is this person doing? There's no way you're trying to pull into a spot right next to me as I'm backing out. What are you... What is going on? What is going on? What is going on? Bro, what is happening? What are you doing? Oh, he's backing into a spot. Okay, cool. Happy he didn't let me pull out first. That was very nice of him. Whatever. Okay. Anyway, let's talk about the workout. So let's start with squats. Um, first off... Like I said last last video, my squats are just so much better than they used to be. Like, it's monumental how much my squat has changed. Like, my bench, yes, is definitely way better than it was before. My deadlift, obviously, is way better than it was before. My squat is, like, looks like a different lift to me. Like, I've changed my squat so much, especially today, which I'm going to talk about in a sec. But, like, my squat is so good now. Like, I love it. So, anyway. Okay, so let's talk about what happened today. So... The first one I thought moves really well, um, and I think it moves really easy, but obviously it's really light. So my coach was like, you know what? Let's try something real quick because it's light and you think it's light and it's moving good. Let's put your feet a little bit closer together because I do squat really wide, or I used to, at least you saw, and let's see how that moves. So I did that, and honestly, it moves really well. Like, it felt a little weird, like going down. It was definitely like a little less steady going down but exploding out of the hole felt absolutely amazing. Like getting past where I would usually get stuck felt 
so easy. Like, there was no sticking point at all. So, and it also apparently looked more stable, and I already had more power out of the hole. So I'm 100% sticking with that. I'm gonna mess with that for a while, probably. As long as I'm wearing squat shoes, my squat form is gonna be a little weird, just because, like, it's, it's pretty hard to get stable. So the biggest thing I will say from my perspective today of changing my squat form is, like, since I wear squat shoes, because I have to to hit depth at the moment, or at least I think I do, I, you can't get much toe pressure. Like, it, it's very hard to get your big toe to, like, get your whole foot on the ground because you have a heel lifting you like this. So if you're trying to dig in like this, you're going to be uneven. You're going to be, like, on the inside of your, like, your heel. You're not going to be on your ball, the ball of your feet, which is what you want to center, obviously, on your feet. So you're pretty much always on your, like, back of your foot, which is a lot harder to do. In general, squatting on the back of your foot is way harder than squatting midfoot, which is why most people are flat, because when you're flat, you can center your whole foot. It's like deadlifting or like benching, anything else. You want your whole foot on the ground to get the most stable base possible. With me putting my feet in closer, I can dig my toe a little bit more in this way without losing any pressure and without my knees caving. Also, he said my knees tracked a lot better over my knees, which I do agree with, because when I go wide, my knees definitely cave in a little bit because I'm so wide, my knees can't go that wide. Like, I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna have any balance. I'm gonna pull my hip. So since my feet are a little closer together, my hips like kind of line up straighter and my knees can pop out and go up normal. Like instead of having to pop all the way out and obviously they're not falling in, which just happened, like knee valgus happens when it's heavy, but happens a little bit less. There, that kid is a psycho. Um, happens a little bit less um, with that. So I like that a lot. Also, what I was saying is I get more pressure on my big toe which kind of made it, like, I could feel the ground a little bit, which I never can in my heels, which is why I stopped benching with my heels, to be honest. I couldn't feel the ground. You can't feel how centered you are because you just feel the heel, and you're just elevated, which I need. I don't know if I even need that for depth anymore because my ankle mobility and everything is much better, but I don't know if we're going to change that until after the meet just because that's a really big change. Like, changing where my feet are a little bit, whatever, like, it's not that big a deal. Like, I'm wearing wraps now for my squat. Like, everybody else, it feels a little bit better on my elbows. Like, that's, those are all not big deals. But changing if I'm wearing heels or not is a big deal. Like, that that will change my whole entire squat. It might change my, like, it's going to change my range of motion. It's going to change my depth. It's going to change my, like, my everything. So, I don't know if we're going to change that during this block. Maybe we will. I mean, if my squats keeps going, and maybe it's just like, why don't you try it without, without heels one day, and it moves better, then sure, I'll change it. But... I don't know. I'm only doing it if he wants me to. I have no interest in doing it by myself. I'm fine with the heels. If he thinks it's going to help a lot, I'll try. Either way, I think I'm definitely going to stick with that, that closer stance just because me being able to feel the pressure means when I was going down, right, I can explode the hole by pushing into the ground like a deadlift. Like you're supposed to like, you know, push into the ground to get tension. Before when I was squatting, I would never do that. I would just, you know, it was more of just the, okay, go up, like go down, go up. Let's just stand up. It was never like think about like push in and you know whatever. I feel like it's kind of funny to explain this, but somebody in the gym told me like this is exactly how he feels too. He feels too. I feel like I have leg drive on my squat because I can dig my toe in and push against the ground. So it felt way better. So I'm definitely gonna stick with that. And obviously I'll get more comfortable going down with it and be more stable. Um, he also said to hinge maybe a little bit less, which I do kind of agree with because I was hinging a lot today. Uh, my hinge like definitely helps me a shit ton. I'm definitely not gonna stop hinging, but maybe a little bit less because I hinged a lot. Like I was almost like, almost like I was deadlifting when I was hinging, which is a little low just because it's a low bar squat. Like you don't want to be that far down. So maybe hinge a little bit less and my squat will be like just minor tweaks and we'll get like to perfect form, which I'm, I'm honestly, in my opinion, I'm pretty close. Like my, compared to what my squat used to be, I'm way closer. Bench today, insane as well. Two and a half kilos off my all time PR, which I hit on, on uh, Friday. Um, at around eight per RB, maybe it was a little like eight and a half instead of eight, but that was a five second tempo with a solid two second pause. It's supposed to be one second pause, but he gave me, I did commands, which that was a solid pause, a solid tempo, ass never left the ground, leg drive was perfect. Everything was good. The only thing he said to adjust was I let my hips drop really fast, like when I have the bar over me. So if I let them down a little bit slower, I'll have a little bit more tension, make that even easier. But beautiful bench for me right there. That is the best I think my bench has ever looked in my life felt really good too um five second tempo to get two and a half kilograms off my all-time pr is crazy to me like i can i have zero complaints about that 
So that was good. Uh, Larson also moved really well through by nine. I think it's the best. That's the heaviest Larson I've ever done, and it's the most reps I've ever done with pauses. Too, I wasn't even touching going. I was pretty much pausing every rep, um, and I was still moving really well. Last time I did Larson, I almost failed. I think I was close to failing my last rep, but like it was, it was solid. I still got it. Reverse pec deck. I literally cannot improve. I don't know why. I guess it's just like root out the hard muscle. And I'm already going really heavy, but. I cannot get more than 110 for 14 on my first set and 110 for 12. I don't know why. It's just like a plateau, which doesn't really matter. It's weird depth, but I cannot get better. I don't know why. Abs um, definitely got better. My abs are cramping at the end of that set. Uh, that ab machine is actually really good. I used to hate that machine, but now I kind of like it. You just like tuck in and it's like, it's a good ab machine. Uh, pump wise, I wasn't expecting anything today because it's literally just technical work, like almost nothing else but technical work. Probably one of the best chest pumps I've ever had in my life, which is kind of ironic, but My chest I feel like my chest is really my front double bicep, which I'm sure is the thumbnail Knowing me, I think that was my best pose today, and that's probably gonna be a thumbnail I feel like I was like my chest was popping in that pose today, so No complaints about the workout today at all. New block starts Friday. I'm super excited tomorrow. I have off Um, I don't know how filming's gonna work if the block is pretty much the same and just different reparations this videos might be boring, but you know what, whatever, that's how it works, right? It's repetitive after a while anyway. Um, I assume he's going to give me my new block tomorrow, so I don't know if I'm going to film Friday, but Friday will be squat and bench again. So probably not. I'll probably film Saturday as long as that's still my deadlift day because I haven't done deadlifts on the channel in like probably like a week and a half at this point. Um, and I want to show you guys my new deadlift form and how good it is. So hopefully I have deadlifts on my block on Saturday. So I'll film then. Um, it might be a little rushed because my dad is coming to town on Saturday, but it's okay. Um, either way, solid workout. What am I talking about? Oh, um, I weighed in really heavy today. I don't know why. It's not like I'm concerned about it or anything. Like, I'm not freaking out. Like, I don't care. But, like, it's kind of weird because I've been weighing in pretty consistently. Like, 176, like, 170, from 175 to 176 and a half consistently for the last like one and a half two weeks which is good that's what i want like to be within that range pretty much right now today i went in at 179 i ate exactly what i always do yesterday like nothing changed up i maybe I ate a little bit later and i drank a little bit more water but like an extra two and a half pounds is kind of insane to me i don't know how i gained two and a half. i mean it doesn't matter i know it's water weight whatever but I was like, wow, 179. Like, that's crazy to see on the scale. I don't think I've ever... I've been, like, never, like, lean 179. Like, to, for me to have abs at 179 is crazy to me. I'm so happy about that. So, yeah. Um, uh, I need to stay under 181, though, because that's what I'm competing in on January 20th, which is 10 weeks away. So, I have 10 weeks right now. If I stay at 179 to put on 2.5 pounds, that's not good. That's I'm going to be there way too fast. But my average weight should be, like, 176, so I should have time. I don't know why I weighed in so heavy today, but my goal is to not have to water cut for the meat. I want to just be able to eat, live my normal life, like just eat normal, drink normal, and then go to my meat like normal. I don't want to have to water cut. I don't want to have to actually cut. I don't want to have to like, so like, like have zero sodium for a bunch and then like electrolyte up. Like I don't have to do any of that shit. I just want to be normal, which at the moment should be very doable. But you never know. Um, if I keep gaining, if I keep like, if I'm 179, and let's say like day of the meet, I weigh in at like, like the more when I wake up, because I'm pretty sure I only I have to weigh in at one o'clock, because I'm I'm gonna believe I'm gonna be in the second, um, almost positive I'm gonna be in the second sweep of lifters because I'm I'm gonna be at 83 and a half kg. There's no way that they're gonna have me do the the morning session, which I really hope I don't, because that means I have to go weigh in at 7:30 a.m. and I do not want to have to go in at 7.30 a.m. If I have to weigh in at 1, I can see my weight on my scale, see if I have to, like, lose. Like, I don't have to, like, spit in anything like that. But, like, if I need to, I can go to the sauna, like, go somewhere and just, like, just sweat out some stuff if I need to. Which, um, hopefully I don't. But we will see. Uh, I hope I'm second flight of lifters, though, because that means I get, to, I get a little bit more time to do anything. So it's a little less stressful, which is obviously what you want on meet day. Um, I've already set my rat, my rat kites and all that shit. I'm pretty excited. Like, I actually have a good chance of winning open, unless the kid that's going in, unless the kid that's competing in junior also goes into open, which I don't know if he will, because he already didn't when he signed up. 
or somebody else like new joins open, I actually have a really good chance to win open. And I was, I was expecting to get shit on my first meet. Like my numbers are not good. Like I'm, my goal is to hit 500 kg at my meet, which is like nowhere close. Like I need, I think I need 610 to qualify at 82 and a half. I'm, I'm trying to hit 500 happily. So if I can hit 500 and win, that'd be crazy. That'd be su that'd make me super happy. I'm obviously juniors. I don't know the guy junior total might have like a 750 total or some shit. Like I'm fucked, but. Open, he's not competing again. So I could win open, Loki. That'd be that'd be amazing. If I can win raw open at 82 and a half in my first meet ever, I will be super, super, super happy. So anyway, solid workout. I'm excited, the new block is coming. The strength gains are here. PRs are coming soon, very soon. We're only 10 weeks away. It's going pretty fast, and I'm excited. Yeah, I'll, I'll see you guys in the next one. Uh, hopefully, I'll be deadlifting.